Добрый день, уважаемые друзья. Мы начинаем. Online and offline have great speakers, representatives of the Moscow city government, developers and architects. So here uh, I have Vladimir Efimov, deputy mayor of Moscow, responsible for the economic policy and also the land uh, and property. Uh, Vladimir Birlovich, uh, head of the Moscow territorial uh, Center Etalon Group, Nikita, Mark, Mark Williams, LDA Design, London, and Nikita Malikov, CEO, architectural company Malikov. So today we're going to discuss how we are, uh, we're going to live in the industrial epoch. The zonage of the cities was, uh, was very strict, and that is why uh, there are industrial zones in different areas which change, having new functions, uh, mixed type of construction, uh, and also new uh, living zones emerge. So we're going to discuss today the approaches of the development of this kind of territories, how much different kinds of cities and towns really use them, how uh, can they influence uh, these territories. This is what we're going to discuss today. And I would like to give the floor first to Vladimir Efimov. We know that there are two big proje projects uh, for complex territorial development are fulfilled, and this year an agreement uh, was Sign. So, what? How do you think these two projects uh, will impact the development of the city, and how can the city influence uh, on investment? We know that this kind of territories, industrial ter territories, require a lot of funding, and also for the organizational structure. So, Vladimir, the floor is yours. You're absolutely right. Vladimir, I'm so happy to see you now. So you're absolutely right. Development and renovation of the territories, uh, which were the industrial zones before, is in a quite a tough issue. Before that, the industrial zones uh, were about 15,000 hectares. Uh, here in Moscow, uh, part of these industrial zones are improved uh, with new real estate facilities and other kinds of facilities, but uh, some of them are still there. Some of them are used for uh, industrial companies, and about 3,000 hectares are the depressive territories. Sometimes uh, they're just uh, uh, storage facilities or just nothing, the territory which is not involved in the economic life of the city. And that is why we really welcomed uh, the uh, new code for city construction, uh, which, uh, which introduced the new mechanism for the complex territory development. Uh, it, hel it helps us to take decisions of this kind of landings, what to do with them. It also contains a very good, efficient mechanism how to deal with it. Today, we can see that on these territories, uh, which makes about 3,000 hectares, 150 uh, sites, so we can have uh, uh, more than 20 uh, uh, 200,000 uh, uh, square mile of places uh, have uh, about seven th uh, trillion investments, and this will result in, uh, in the improvement of the city's economy and new jobs. Let me explain why. In accordance with the national project accessible uh, housing, uh, we have to develop and to increase pace uh, of uh, uh, provision our citizens uh, with their apartments. We support this vision because Moscow is one of the regions uh, where uh, people have uh, uh, 
too little apartments. So a lot of people still need uh, apartments. Um, and they want the apartment of, of good quality. But uh, on the other hand, we understand that uh, we cannot just build flats and apartments. Uh, we need to develop uh, rapidly, but as a complex. Uh, with complex systems. Uh, this is why the sites I've uh, spoken about are very good potential for new jobs, new flats, new uh, and new uh, modern construction even. When we speak about the reconstruction of the industrial zones, we never say that all the industrial companies should leave Moscow. The reality of industry of today is so that we need to create modern, up-to-date uh, industrial companies. And we do not uh, need uh, thousands and uh, hectares of square meters. Uh, the industry of today requires less space and less uh, people. A very good example is the uh, car. Uh, construction plant uh, used to be the ladder uh, company. Now uh, we have uh, Renault there, so we have uh, five uh, times less uh, people, much less uh, uh, space they occupy, but they uh, launch uh, the same amount of cars compared to what happened before. So increased efficiency of uh, the of the space uh, in the city is important. That is why I'm highlighting the complex approach. We always bear in mind that we do not want just to construct something. We want to have good spaces. Uh, we have a complex approach to the improved life of our people. The approach uh, which uh, is uh, rarely used so far, but we have uh, two agreements signed on the complex development of uh, further industrial territories. So we have a plan. Uh, we're going to look at uh, the rest of the sites, about 150 of them, and we plan uh, to prepare them for the investors uh, within the coming year. So we hope that this mechanism will be in demand and will help to, to create comfortable, full-fledged uh, uh, regions with good environment. Thank you so much, Vladimir. Clearly, this is very important trend of the cities of today. So, uh, digital approach, uh, modern technologies, uh, and production reduces uh, the amount of people involved uh, in the construction. But uh, the production uh, does not go down. On the contrary, and uh, all the leaders say that we need to attract as uh, much new industrial uh, instruments uh, as possible, having new jobs, new spaces uh, as a result of that. Uh, so we hope that this kind of uh, redevelopment projects will help people to get uh, new places uh, to live and to work. because. Uh, Moscow has always been a model here. We've discussed Moscow as a model for the whole country, and not only uh, for our country, but uh, for the whole world globally. Because today uh, we have great uh, internationally recognized objects like the Zaryadze Park. Thank you so much for such a thorough presentation. And uh, we are going to the Etalon Group, one of very good projects for uh, re redevelopment. Uh, Maxim, the floor is yours now. Vladimir. Um, said that uh, we need to have a complex approach uh, in development because it sometimes happens going around the country we can see just blocks of flats and nothing more. What uh, 
uh, new will you have uh, in this project, uh, Zeal South? And how uh, can you meet this uh, balance? Because your approach is balanced. Uh, thank you so much, Natalia. Let me present several slides to you. When we sp speak about the development of the territories, which uh, were paralyzed for a long t uh, for a long time, uh, uh, we use the term revitalization. We want this territory to live, to be vital once again. So together with the city makers and KCP companies, we decided uh, to think how we could work with the territories having no business activity today. Let me bring about some, some data to prove that. Uh, now, uh, well, well, some platforms uh, of uh, the ZEAL const uh, const construction plant uh, is now part uh, of the area, the southern area of Moscow. But still, we have uh, we have this territory of the factory zeal uh, and of the south port uh, which is located next to it so clearly uh, we 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 know that it will be a new city center and a place of interest too so let let me share with you the pictures uh, so on the left hand side we have uh, the year 1915 uh, and after that uh, all the all the there was uh, the defrostization uh, all the woods were uh, uh, actually disappeared uh, and uh, people gathered and trying to realize uh, what to do with this territory. So many years uh, later, again, we have a clear territory. Uh, after, uh, after the first uh, part when uh, there were a lot of industrial companies, we don't have anything there, actually, uh, because the territory is paralyzed. You can see there is no activity there, no car traffic uh, and no functions uh, for uh, the citizens, uh, no the medical facilities, no educational, commercial facilities, no libraries. So we realized that before go going in accordance with the plan, we wanted to look at the territory uh, to see the target we have in front of uh, us because uh, this should be part of the city. So we decided to set a new target that was uh, to motivate uh, the people to uh, spend uh, as much time as possible in their region. and. Uh, just construction was not enough. We were to figure out uh, for who we uh, create the space, for the local residents or for all the Moscovites. Uh, we were to think uh, how much time uh, different people will spend to get to that uh, recreation place. Uh, uh, we need to think about the traffic jams all the time because we have uh, more and more traffic uh, every year. This uh, we discussed before the planning. So we took the plan and we decided to improve it together with the city government because we wanted to adapt it to the uh, demands of today. So we uh, decided uh, to have several routes, some of them just for the public, public transport. Then we subdivided. Uh, Highways uh, and uh, pedestrian uh, areas, you can see them in different colors. Also, we have uh, some uh, linking areas uh, for everyone. Uh, well, with You can see them with the uh, green color. So all, all this work was part uh, of the city plan. Uh, so we didn't have to change it really, but we realized that we could improve it, creating more comfortable 
uh, environments. So the next issue is multimodality. Can we transfer from the standard ways of transport, uh, uh, personal cars, uh, uh, metro, buses, uh, trolley bus, uh, get to something different? And uh, yes, we said, uh, but we dis uh, also realized that we had to change a lot of things. So we narrowed the spaces for transfer, uh, and uh, we also created special places for bicycles, for recreation, for uh, pedestrians, for walks. All the information uh, we accumulated uh, the software and also we uh, decided to uh, to look for experts uh, uh, and they started working with us uh, these were different experts on digital approach on construction on design and the local residents too so we tested it on the territory of the former factory zeal south speaking about the comfortable environment we realized that everything should be diverse, not only the routes and the pathways, but the construction sites. So we, we decided uh, to make it diverse. So uh, as part of the first uh, 200,000 square meters, we uh, introduced six types of uh, houses uh, and blocks, so big uh, uh, towers, cascades, hybrid ones, uh, and also smaller houses. And the detached houses uh, are closer to the park. Uh, we also wanted to make the park uh, a linking territory, so speak about redevelopment, revitalization. Uh, we need to focus on the social and cultural areas. So this uh, is the start. After that, we speak about the documents for the uh, construction. Thank you so much, Maxim. The project is really interesting. But what are the functions? Cons uh, but the housing uh, you planned here, well, uh, our first target uh, was the social areas. But next to the Mark Chagall embankment, you probably seen it on the website uh, of the Moscow city government. And the plan to link this embankment with other uh, territories and uh, centers of the city. So the plan is to make a, a 13 kilometer embankment uh, linking uh, different areas in Moscow, Taganka, Pichetniki, so that people could just walk uh, and not use their personal uh, cars. So healthy lifestyle uh, and uh, entertainment uh, is actually our target. Uh, it will look like the embankment we have uh, in the Gorky Park. Social infrastructure is also important, you're right. So we plan uh, to have a commercial cluster there, as far as I know. So we uh, work uh, on this uh, zeal uh, south, but together with other companies dealing with other areas. Thank you so much, Maxim. We've discussed uh, today that the pandemic will change the city environment. Some processes uh, started before the pandemic, the digital approach, the di online uh, trade, for instance. Uh, uh, that all started before the pandemic, but is developing rapidly now. Uh, this uh, is happening in the United States of America, uh, and uh, well, the, a lot of transformation uh, happened. For instance, the parking places changed uh, into social uh, environments. Uh, this is a good, could be a good topic for you. And we're going to Mark Williams, uh, LD. Uh, is uh, Design London is really an experience 
uh, person. So your box are the uh, Queen Elizabeth box and the redesign uh, of the, uh, the one point. So what projects do you think um, are most relevant? What challenges did you have and how do you meet them in your practice? Thank you and, and good morning from, from London. Um, I'm very pleased to be here. Um, I think it's been really interesting listening to Vladimir and Maxim actually. Um, the two things that, that shone through in their presentations. Firstly, Vladimir asking, how do we design spaces for future industries and also Maxim talking about how we encourage people to spend time in re revitalized places. Why, why do they want to be there and why do they want to live there? Um, so the two projects that I'm going to talk through, um, both of them start with landscape. So one thing that we found in our approach to design is whether that's in London or Moscow, landscape is a device that helps heal post-industrial landscapes and helps to create place. Um, both of the projects I'm going to talk you through um, started with landscape as their vision um, and the in old English definition of landscape mm. actually means um, creating places where people belong. And for me, that is the big challenge of regeneration. It's that ability to create places where people want to live and where they want to, to feel a sense of belonging and ownership. The first project is the uh, London 2012 Olympic Park. Um, and many people will have seen that park or visited it um, during the Olympic Games or after the Games. But only 10 years sort of before the Games, it was, it was an industrial site, um, heavily polluted, um, with extraordinary national, uh, natural assets, uh, including river corridors and, and pieces of open space, but heavily polluted. Um, so in advance of the Games, we were responsible for the master plan uh, and regenerating the, the landscape. Um, including 10 kilometers of river that we restored and created new habitats. So the regeneration process of Stratford started with the Olympic Games. And really, um, everyone knows the Games and the celebrations that took, took place in 2012. But the landscape was the device and the, the powerful move that allowed us to start healing and restoring the river corridors. So what you can see here are some fantastic habitats. They also removed houses and homes in London from flood risk by providing additional flood capacity in this part of London. It also allowed us to create a landscape that would work after the games, after 2012. So in amongst the, the chaos and the party of the Olympic games in 2012, we also brought some calm natural landscapes that residents could enjoy. And the park itself has now become a legacy it's become a, a place where community has established. It's become a place where residents live. So, so bringing residents and people into regeneration and revitalization projects is crucial to get people living there. And the project continues to grow. So we always say, you know, make no small plans, always think big, always think long term. And we did that with the master plan for the Olympic Games. We looked at a games mode that worked during 2012 and then a legacy mode that works to this day and is still evolving. Um, and as part of that, we then de delivered three additional projects after the Games itself. The first of which here east, which you can see in the top left, was the former communications building during the Olympic Games. And we transformed that into a, a new digital quarter for London. Um, it provides 7,000 jobs in the heart of London um, for, for digital companies and tech startups. Further to the south, we've also been delivering the master plan, which is now on site for UCL, a university campus, to come into the Olympic Park. And that was a really creative space that also has a, a unique concept for the ground floor of the university buildings called the fluid zone, where the community can come in. So it's a campus, but also the local community can enjoy the facilities as well. And we're now working on the design of the Stratford waterfront, which is the the new home for the London College of Fashion, um, the BBC Sound Recordings, uh, Victoria and Albert Museum, and also Sadler's Wells Ballet Theatre. This is the biggest investment in culture in London since the 1950s with the South Bank and the Royal Festival. So a significant move for East London. The second project is private sector-led. It's developer-led rather than government-led. And it's Battersea Power Station. 
um, an iconic landmark in London that originally was just half a power station and actually due to the demands of the growth of London evolved into two parts and a full power station, which is the, the listed building um, in London, a protected conservation asset. But obviously it's life deteriorated and most people know it as the symbol from the Pink Floyd album with a pig floating above the, uh, <laughs> above the factory itself. And it presented an amazing opportunity to regenerate a region and a, 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 a network of spaces in London as well. So the master plan um, has some unique features. It delivers um, an extraordinary new park on the banks of the River Thames. It also delivers 400 metres of, of new waterfront public realm and public spaces. But in order to do that in London, it's, regeneration is sometimes a scary process for local communities. So what we like to do on our projects is, is deliver change very early that the local community can see is positive. So we developed a strategy of very simple um, pop-up spaces that could be delivered during the construction programme. So a very simple lawn against the backdrop of the beautiful listed building that allowed us to host events there. And during the construction phases, we've had 40,000 visitors every weekend. Um, the detailed design as well on regeneration projects, it's really important to celebrate heritage and the past of the site. So we used reminders of the, the everyday detail of the chimney to inspire some of the public realm fe features, even down to the detail of the bins and the recycling facilities using the same materials as the chimney. Then to the current day and thinking about how spaces operate in the pandemic, um, during the summer, there has still been a curated events program with outdoor cin cinemas. Um, one of the critical things to provide for the local community were affordable spaces so that the regeneration allows the existing community to still find a home and a place for their businesses to thrive within the new development. So under the rail arches here, we see some affordable spaces for, for local enter enterprises and local startup businesses. We now currently on site are getting half a million visitors per year. Um, so the numbers have continued to increase um, and the first phase units are sold. And the estimations are that 40 million vi visitors will visit Battersea Power Station when it's complete in the future. This includes um, the new UK headquarters for Apple to be located within the power station. Um, open spaces where everyone can come together. So it was interesting listening to Maxime talk about Zill we really want to encourage people of all backgrounds to come to, to Battersea Power Station and learn to play with each other, learn to thrive in the new community. And also to understand the, the role of the, the redevelopment and the regeneration in the wider London context. So thinking about how we connect into the city centre and also how we open up access to a site that for many years has been private and sterile. We can now open up the embankment and allow the public to move through. Um, and just a final slide, I think, is as part of the creative process for, for regeneration schemes, always encourage everyone to think of the unexpected and expect the unexpected. At Battersea Power Station, we even had mermaids during the early phases of development. So expect the unexpected and you will achieve extraordinary things. Thank you so much, Mark, for such a detailed presentation, uh, presenting your projects. You're right. This is what we think as a complex project. When we have new functions, new territories, uh, everything changes. The landscape changes, and we have the new uh, uh, centers, uh, new uh, attraction centers, uh, new social spaces, new jobs. And I would like to give the floor to Nikita Malika. Nikita, you work with other different spaces as a uh, design company. So what criteria do, uh, do you think are the most important for the new uh, in spaces and what challenges are there? Thank you for this question. Let me answer 
sh as short as possible. So thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. Um, so many times I've been in Brazil. I haven't been uh, to uh, London. I haven't seen what you uh, what you have done, Mark. Uh, but I hope I will do it. Speak, studying redevelopment here, we can see that the majority of people are young specialists, uh, younger than 40. I also joined uh, this process uh, quite early. Uh, so how did it all start? With the lofts, and everyone does the lofts now, but in the year 2006 and seven, all this started, and it went to the regions. So re clearly, uh, this is the time when all the redevelopment started. Let me share with you four cases and four rules and four principles we'll figure out working with these cases. The first case is that we only are in our infancy, unlike Europe. We are lacking behind, but still we are gaining lots of experience. We are accumulating experience, we are doing that very fast. And the key role is to keep learning, keep learning. And the very first case is a, a very typical thing which we may see in any city. Such buildings, such structures are typical of any city. We read in the textbooks that if you do renovation and you change the design code, then the flows of people will change, the economy of the place would change. But no one knew for sure, actually, how to calculate uh, that, how to measure that. And very often we do some test cases, and this cost us only 7 million rubles, and we changed, actually, how everything changes, and the redevelopment showed that uh, it may uh, boost the economy dramatically. Next rule, we like to experiment so much that we went further. Next rule is you have to experiment everywhere and always. This is the city of Kazan, a plant which could not be demolished. It could not be demolished because uh, actually it was a nuclear bomb-proof structure. It was built uh, during the Soviet period, and our session is dedicated to the sustainable development. One of the principles of sustainable development is to demolish as less as possible. This is what we did. We didn't change anything. We added a few items, features, and we kept uh, most of the structure of the carcass. Saving up time for the demolition, and we actually saved in terms of the wastes. Because if you do not demolish anything, then you don't have any uh, wastes. Um, the economy has to be economical. City of Kazan, the city arranged an architectural biennale in order to find out how to work with such territory. The owner of the territory started demolishing all the buildings prior to the Biennale and kept to the walls around the territory. Twenty jurors were invited in order to somehow identify certain principles how to work with that territory. And as was said before, let me repeat that once again. One of the key principles behind working with big territories is about creating public spaces uh, and uh, actually to provide for the walk-through capacity. And once we're speaking about the sustainable development, we have to keep the historical legacy. When we defended uh, that uh, project, one of the jury members uh, approached us and said, why actually didn't you demolish part of the building making a walk through inside, actually, and I thought, how can we demolish that? Because we cannot build anything like that. There are facades, very flat ones and very gray ones. We cannot replicate such an architecture. Therefore, it is very important to keep such an architecture, to work very cautiously with that. Really, the redevelopment project is about uh, finding funds uh, for keeping the legacy and to build something new, to bring the, a new life into this building. And this is a zero-gain building, the one which you see in the very center. This is an occasional cluster where 
Actually, you can rent uh, the space for 100 rubles per square meter so that uh, people are used to coming to that territory. And this is uh, not experiment, and economically, it turned out that it is very much feasible. This is how it looks like. On the left-hand side, this is our historical legacy. And we are adding new structures to that. And uh, on the right-hand side, um, this is what the owner managed to demolish already. And uh, some housing is being built there. And it is very important to combine redevelopment and construction of something new. And the most important case, which actually is not built yet, the city of Tver is home to the barracks. Quite old ones, 100 buildings, 44 of them are regarded as historical monuments. Uh, there are whole ensembles of monuments, uh, an extraordinary plot which was built uh, uh, more than 50 years ago, housing for the workers, uh, kindergartens since 150 years ago, industrial tycoon Seven Morozov did what is uh, totally unimaginable today. But um, this uh, territory is totally dilapidated, um, 80 to, uh, 68 hectares of uh, buildings which cannot be demolished. Different major companies try to relaunch that uh, territory. Uh, Strelka Design Bureau and Dom.RF also is discussing that. And uh, actually, the approach is to demolish what can be demolished and build something in you and reconstruct the historical monuments. But I do think that this principle is totally inapplicable. Another principle of the system of development is to keep at maximum the business which is available there. This is a little pilot project, a prototype. Um, firefighting deep war, which now sells uh, equipment for firefighting. And the owner of that uh, building told me, let's reno renovate that. And it costs only 5 million rubles, quite um, little money. After that, federal officials came to us to find out how we managed to do that. We didn't have to resettle uh, the less leaseholders. Why we have to? move uh, the businesses out of these buildings or residents uh, out of these buildings, we can totally renovate the territory, attracting new businesses and new settlers. Uh, the first approach is when you ask for 20 billion rubles and demolish everything and then uh, build something in you and uh, my company tries to save up a lot of money and a lot of resources without uh, any disputes and uh, it may cost uh, 10 times less. One of the key principles of the redevelopment is to keep at maximum what is available there, not just retune it and reset that in order to provide for a different quality. Thank you so much, Nikita. We are finishing our session. Uh, we heard very, we listened to very interesting presentations summing up what we have heard. We may say that, first of all, a lot would depend on the urban policy. And Vladimir Efimov in his presentation stressed that Moscow consciously uh, dedicate these territories. It looks where the uh, support of uh, the local authorities is needed in order to launch uh, these processes. What Maxim spoke about. Really, we all are working in the existing legal framework, and we have to follow that. But the dialogue which does exist and which should be conducted between the developer and the local authorities is necessary in order to improve all the living conditions and making sure that the project is good for the authorities, for the developer, and for the residents. I'd like to thank our foreign guest, Mark Williams. Thank you so much for your, the presentation of the London case, the case of London. This is a very good example of how new functions are added to the territory. Moscow is uh, living through 
certain sophisticated processes. For instance, we have a bunch of national projects in the area of education. We are developing the educational centers, which are reshaping the campuses and uh, the centers of uh, the territory of the university. This is, again, about redevelopment when businesses may come to reshape the territory for their own purposes, speak about housing and residential um, territories. This is what Etalon is doing, a totally different approach to business units and totally different requirements. If we look at industrial sites, then again, it would be a totally different territory, unlike what we saw before. And it resembles industrial parks, and this process goes on as well. And uh, one industry is uh, substituted with another industry, but with totally new creative functions. And uh, sometimes, actually, we add innovative or digital quarters which have the same approaches. And as Nikita said, we have to keep whatever we can. And uh, this uh, is true not only residential houses, but also the industrial houses. We actually should not resettle the residents because it is not economically wise. We actually say that uh, keep saying that a new developer will come and would do a miracle, but we have quite few uh, developers, especially in the region, uh, regions. Therefore, re redevelopers have to be engaged into the process, and uh, this is how we can create new spaces. Thank you so much, dear colleagues. In several minutes, just in 15 minutes. We will have a plenary session dedicated to the mega policies, how the mega policies react to the global challenges, how they change their strategies. Have a good day. Thank you.